Welcome to the Star Citizen 3.14 Thrustmaster HOTAS Warthog Profile Installation. Before we get started, download the profile from the link in the description below. In 3.14, there are two important changes that you must know about. Number one is the installation location for the .xml has changed. Number two is when you clear all the device bindings in the joystick HOTAS section, there are some that remain. You will need to click on each section in there and remove any device bindings that remain. Now that you've downloaded the profile, it is in a zip folder and you'll have to double click on it and you'll see four different files. We need to move some of these files to different locations for later use. The first location we need to go to is the mappings folder inside of Star Citizen. This has changed for 3.14. You'll need to follow the link in the description above. They've now added client and zero before you get to controls and mapping. Copy and paste the .xml folder and put it into the mappings folder. Next, we want to move this .fcf file for your Warthog profile into a folder that you choose for later use when you want to run this configuration. For me, I put a file on my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and grab this, copy and paste it into this file for later use. The next file in here is the profile map. This profile map shows you all of the locations for all of the different buttons and what they do. I suggest watching this profile design video for further questions. The last file in here is the profile installation instructions. You're going to want to have these open while we're going through this. We're actually going to skip to page 14. As page 14 has button numbers for assignments we're going to use because you actually need to assign some of these in game. This is due to a mouse conflict issue that I haven't found a resolution for. Specifically, we'll be working with buttons one and six, as well as the axes of pitch and roll and the weapons fire groups up here for the missiles. On page 15, you're going to find where we have the strafe axis here that you're going to need to bind. And then we also have the throttle axis for throttle forward. Just know that when I'm referring to a button number or to an axis, it's referring to page 14 or 15 in the installation guide. Now we're gonna to need to go to this link available in both the installation instructions and in the description of this video. You'll need to scroll down to where it says software open up that software section, go down to the bottom, and download the most recent version, which may differ from the instructions that you see. Next, you want to go into your downloads folder, double click on the exe for the target software and install it into your computer. Once installed on your computer, you should see an icon that says target GUI or GUI. Open up the target GUI. Once open, click run configuration. You'll need to find the file that you stored the .fcf in, and you'll see the .fcf file there. Double click on it, and the profile will run. It'll make some beeping noises as you've heard, and then also at the bottom, you should see where it says main returned zero. Once this is complete, you'll wanna go ahead and click on the event tester. On the event tester, you're gonna to wanna to push a few different buttons on the profile, and I'll show you where now. You're going to wanna to push some buttons on the TMS on the joystick, and then you'll also want to go ahead and push some of the buttons on the push to talk on the throttle. This is because the Thrustmaster software actually combines your individual joystick and throttle input into one combined joystick. Checking that you get results for both in the event tester will allow you to confirm that you are not facing a potential issue. If you do not see both the hat switches give you information and a bind and release in the event tester, then you need to go to the troubleshooting guide on page 10. There are several different things that can occur, including if you plug in another device, it can reassign your axes names and cause the profile not to work. The troubleshooting guide on page 10 has four different distinct sections that are gonna help you with four different problems. Once you have tested that, you can close the event tester and we can launch Star Citizen. Once in Star Citizen, you'll need to open the command prompt by pressing the tilde key usually located above the tab key. 
Once the command prompt is open, you'll need to type in exactly as follows, pp underscore rebind keys, and then a space layout underscore and the name of the .xml that you downloaded for your version. The version number may be different than you see in this video. Once you have typed it in, go ahead and hit enter and you should see where it says enjoy at the end. If you do not see this, it's possible you didn't put the .xml in the right folder or maybe you made a typo. Once complete, go ahead and hit the tilde key again and then let's go on down into the options. Once in options, we'll go ahead and click on key bindings and then we're gonna go down to the bottom right and make sure we go to joystick HOTAS. Then on the left, we're gonna click advanced customization controls. Then we're gonna to go to control profiles and we're gonna clear all device bindings. Now this is a little bit tricky in that we're only going to do this for the joystick. We do not wanna to touch the keyboard, mouse, or gamepad. So left click and then select joystick. For the second one, you're gonna left click, slide down to joystick and then scroll wheel down to where it says one, and then for the third one, scroll wheel down until it says two. Don't worry about it if you don't have this many or if you have extra. We just need something in the slot to clear out the profile. Once you've done that, click load. For 3.14, this process does not remove all of the device bindings. You'll need to go into each one of these sections and remove any bindings you see. Otherwise, there'll be a conflict and the bindings will interrupt with the profile and it will not work correctly. The first thing we're gonna bind is in flight view and we're gonna go down to dynamic zoom in and out relative. Double click this and then you're gonna to want to push the throttle friction slider on the throttle you see here. This should show up as slider two. Next, we're gonna to go to flight mining and we're going to bind the exact friction throttle to increase, decrease mining laser power. Now don't worry, this will only work when you're in mining laser mode. This will give you a warning that this is already bound to dynamic zoom in and out. This is okay, just click yes. Next, we're gonna to go to flight movement and we're going to bind pitch. Pitch would be pushing forward on the joystick. This should show up as a Y axis and again, just click yes. Next, we're gonna bind yaw. Some people bind yaw to their pedals like I do because I do flight simulators for modern fighter jets. If you choose to put this on your stick as a left movement of the stick on the X axis or right on the X axis, that's a personal choice. For me, this shows up as a Z axis on input number three. You'll wanna note what input number your pitch and roll go to because we're gonna make some adjustments up in the controls tab later. So again, Make sure you note if your Y or X axis has a input number next to it like you see here. Now we'll go ahead and bind roll. And we'll click yes. Now we'll go to throttle forward and we will push the throttle forward to bind that as the Z axis. Next, we need to talk about strafe up and down and strafe left and right. If you have not modified your Thrustmaster Warthog with an analog upgrade for the SLU, then do nothing. However, if you have upgraded your Thrustmaster with an analog upgrade, go ahead and click on strafe up and down and bind it to that axis. And then also bind strafe left and right. Next, you wanna to go to flight scanning. In flight scanning, you're gonna bind buttons one and six as you see on the profile map. And now we will bind button one to activate scan. Next, we will bind scanning radar ping to button number six. Now we're gonna to go to flight weapons and bind the same two buttons to fire groups one and two. Fire group one will be button number one and fire group number two will be button number six. Now expand flight missiles, and we're going to bind button number two to both missile lock and to fire a missile. Star Citizen's default axis settings are odd and sometimes counter to the direction you think they should go. For example, if you push forward on the throttle, it'll actually send you backwards. To fix this, we need to go into the controls tab. Go down to the bottom right and make sure you're on joystick HOTAS. Then we'll go back up to the top left and we're going to expand the inversion settings. We'll go into flight and then we'll go into flight movement. Under flight movement, you need to 
change, yes, on flight strafe up and down because it is also backwards. We'll need to also click yes on flight strafe forward as this is actually for your throttle. Now under just the flight column, you're gonna see where it says dynamic zoom relative. We also wanna change this to yes. This completes the basic installation for the profile. You will wanna look on page nine and 10 in the installation guide. On the tips in this section, you'll find two things that I suggest you take a look at. One is going into options. Under game settings, scroll down until you find proximity assist. I would turn this off. I will link a video here and then a description as to why. Finally, you'll need to go into the key bindings and you'll need to go into vehicles scanning. You'll need to unbind the mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down on the increase scanning angle and decrease scanning angle. If you do not do this, the increase scanning angle and decrease scanning angle on the profile will not work properly. You're now ready to fly and I hope you enjoy your time in the universe. Please leave feedback and comments in the description below.